All right. Oh, that's too loud. Let's... There's a couple notches down. There we go. Pardon my creaky floors. Welcome, welcome. Um, got a couple minutes here, but this will be artful connections with Jonathan Fusco. That's me. That's my phone letting me know that Art Forest is live. Which is true. Um, today I'm painting a dead bird. And I found while I was out of town, out in the country, in Texas. It's a female painted bunting. I thought it was really pretty. The males are even more of a riot of color, but the females are quite quite pretty as well. <laughs> Bird painting hype. Yeah, this is kind of a still life, right? I mean, I'm working from a photo, um, but it was alive and now it's still. I don't think that's really what that means, but. Um, what I've started to do already here is just kind of build up like my various color blocks, places where I'll be basically just finicking and finishing and being fussy uh, for the next hour or so. Um, but I kind of thought this would make kind of a cool color field, um, almost like I was going to shroud it in sort of a magenta. Um, this is just gessoed panel here. Um, I gessoed it in part, even though wood wood can be a pretty cool texture. It absorbs paint and takes forever to make any real progress on. So I thought for our purposes, we'd prepare the surface first. Um, but uh, if you are just joining me, we'll go ahead and just call this the official start. Um, this is Artful Connections, Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. And uh, today I am working from a, an image of a, uh, a bird I found um, that had passed. Uh, a, painted, a female painted bunting, to be precise. And I encourage you today to paint along or draw along with me. If you have any pictures of dead birds in your phone that you've been dying to uh, render, well, now's your chance. Um, Otherwise, I'll be talking a little bit about my process as per usual, and you can just hang out or work along with me, whatever you decide, no wrong answers. Um, I've gotten a little bit of a jump start on this to kind of get a feel for what I was in store for. Um, I haven't painted a lot of birds. I keep doing all these like new things on here. I, I haven't, not that I've never painted a bird, but it's been a while. And this bird's in kind of a weird shape. Um, you can kind of see. Uh, it, it's. Um, its head had been twisted. Uh, so trying to capture that, like all those little creases and that kind of cinched up neck in here is something I'm going to want to capture. But I'll also be trying to play up the saturation. Uh, and again, yeah, I intend to sort of shroud it in a, a field of magenta. I think that would make kind of a nice decorative um, memento to what was really a very pretty bird. Um, I don't know where the if, if she had a, a male friend or not, but they are apparently even more colorful. Um, we did some digging around in the, um, the bird book to figure out which bird this was. So it was a very exciting thing. I hope you will uh, paint. Oh man, I've only even just gotten started blending. I'm kind of right now what I'm trying to do it's just sort of create these like like the body of um, like color pools where I will be taking smaller brushes and kind of manipulating things. So like my darks, I'm just getting my darks down. I'm, uh, the head is the greenest part, so I have like this pool of green. I, even, I actually mixed up way too much green for this painting, so I'll have to find a use for green and some other piece. Um, but thank you for the compliment, and yeah, I hope you will paint along with me. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. And if you are making art today, along with me, please do post what you create in the comments. We would love to see it. Um, 
But yeah, if you're just hanging out, that's cool too. I hear tell the whole world's opening back up again, so... Pretty exciting times. I should turn off notifications on my other phone, so pardon me just a moment here. There we go. No, very pretty bird. It's a sad, sad story, but... Um, there is something about dead birds that, um, <laughs> birds in particular, they, they die with, with sort of a grace that not every animal gets. It might just be that they don't have, um, tongues that stick out of their mouths quite so readily or something like that, but they are, they really are rather lovely, um, even in, uh, death. And I have this sort of ongoing series of images I've been calling them crushed. Um, although it's, mo it's mostly sketches, I've only really done one uh, finished piece, which I believe Emma Parker has. Um, but basically you take a, an object that's been crushed, or a, or a living thing in this case, um, and then kind of turn it into sort of a hyper-decorative, hyper-saturated piece. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for today, is to create this little tiny... Um, hypersaturated decorative piece of something crushed, and in this case, something crushed is uh, the painted bunting in question. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a really nice like roundness to the poofiness to the chest, and I'm afraid of losing that, so I don't want to lose that. I'm listening to Beethoven today, if the music gets distracting. I hadn't tried music in a while for one of these, so if the music gets distracting, just let me know. Um, I can imagine how being picked up on phone speakers and then being played on, well, phone speakers or laptop speakers or whatever you have at home, I can imagine that being not super awesome, so... If it sucks, let me know and I will do something about it. We've got a pretty good start here already. Um, I really like the colors. I don't work with green very often. Um, it's kind of a... I don't know, I couldn't tell you exactly why. I guess it's because I so often work in pinks that it seems a little too stark to throw green in there. You know, they are, they, they are opposite colors, uh, green and red. So I, I think I avoid it in part for that reason. I have like quite a few tubes full of green paint, and I almost never open them up. But today, for the sake of the bunting, we uh, we have. And yeah, what did I mix up? I mixed up a couple colors, two in particular, yeah, uh, that I intend to. Ooh, that dripped. Um, so this green here, I mixed up. That was a combination of viridian and um, this is the cadmium lemon here. Viridian and cadmium lemon. And then I made kind of a teal, which I think is going to come in handy for mixing up colors in the feathers. Um, so the teal is Viridian again with the uh, Severus blue, which is right here. Um, so I thought those colors would both come in handy. I like teal. I don't get to work in teal as very often as I'd like, so I'm um, definitely going to find a use for that. Um, even if we don't um, use all of it today in this painting. I'll have to... I have like three other small pieces I need to finish before I start a big one that's coming up, so I'm hoping they'll be able to use these colors again. All right, so on to the piece. Um, yeah, so you'll notice in the photo I showed you guys, there's like all this little business going on in here, and also I'm going to try to establish where the claws are a bit. Um, Oh, uh, in my substrate, yeah, so this is just a small piece of, uh, yeah, so actually one of these um, live streams I was going to paint on this, and then I was like painting on it and realizing, like, oh, this is going to take forever because the wood was soaking up the paint. So uh, it's an old piece, it's just an old piece of panel, um, which I did several coats of gesso on to fill in some of the crevasses. Um, and then, yeah, I, I had tinted the gesso pink, so it's a little pink. Um, and then, yeah, sanded it. And now it's taking paint pretty well, and I'm um, not soaking it up, so that's great. You can see a remnant of um, some of my sketch marks from earlier. Uh, yeah, my beak was way too low. 
Um, but I kind of like to get my wrong marks down first, just to kind of figure out, okay, well, where the heck is this thing even going to fit on here? We do have a little tension with the edge that I would have preferred to avoid. Um, but I think it's going to be okay. Um, I think as long as we keep this nice, this space here, I wouldn't want it to get any tighter than that. Um, <clears throat> Anyhow, all right. We'll never get anywhere if we talk all day. Let's paint. Oh, that's right. I was going to do the claws. So, how are we doing this? Um, they're kind of hard to see in the photo, so I'm zooming in here. All right. So, they kind of yeah creep down this way, and I'm gonna. This is going to be really loose at the moment. I don't know how tight we'll get. We're going to wait and see how it feels. Um, right now I'm at arm's length painting. So we're going to keep it loose at the moment. All those little birdie feet. Those poor little birdie feet. Um, and I need another small brush. This is going to be a painting of small brushes, I think. And thank you, Lydia. I'm glad the music is not a bad call. I don't think Facebook does takedowns for Beethoven. I don't think anyone owns Beethoven. So. You should be in the clear. So, yeah. what I already, The marks I made are already a little too dark. So I'm going to try to... Oof. That shaky coffee hand. Let's try it. Womp. Where is my other claw gonna be? Ooh, you know what's kinda cool? So the wing actually continues. It comes over here. Yeah. So this gets to be kind of a tangled mess. This will be fun to untangle later, but for now, let's just, um,. For now, we're just going to mark it out. Sorry. They say you shouldn't have dead air on radio. Is this radio? Does this count? Is this radio? All right. So our other claw is right here. Yep. That's where it is. Cool. Cool. It looks a lot better on the phone screen. That doesn't happen very often. It looks a lot better on the phone screen than it does in person. Part of it is just how thin this paint is. Um, once we kind of start laying it on a little thicker um, and build up some body on this thing, it should be pretty fly. I do love having all this dry paint because my color's already there. I am going to be adding to that, but I want to have the bird a little better established before I start... Um, uh, hammering out the um, the contour, so I make sure everything's where I want it, and then yeah, I'll be going over all this with magenta. But at the time, for the time being, this is actually pretty great because now I can rest my hand right here, um, which always makes this kind of thing a little easier. I have a mall stick. Well, it's a cane that I use as a mall stick, um, but it's too big for this. I think I would want to just grab like a board, um, like a. P I have some strips of select pine laying around that would work um <laughs> uh this photo does not have the larva or the fire ants in it um this was a nice graceful photo we took of a uh, really elegant death there were worms and ants inside this bird um and um Yeah, they, they're not going to make it into into this, but I realize now that maybe for our purposes it would have been cool. Uh, I might paint this bird again. I got quite a few photos of it. And I did get some photos of it with the worms, I believe. Or at least I got some footage that I could freeze frame of the worms crawling around. But it is crazy to think just how much messiness was going on inside this bird, but on the outside it just looked fantastic. 
That is a death mask we could all be proud of. All right, so let's carve that out there. Yep. So yeah, I'm going broad stroke here, focusing on my lights and darks mostly. There's going to be all kinds of fun nuance and stuff that's going to be going on in here, but I'm trying not to get caught up in that. It's tempting, but I don't want to yet. Um, I want to first figure out the shapes. Like, these tail feathers are pretty dang cool, and I'm a little afraid I'm not going to do them justice, but we're going to try anyway, because that's why we're here. Um, and yeah, when it comes to a shape like this, um, I am trying to keep it as much as I can one stroke, just to capture that energy. Because feathers kind of feel like they were created in one stroke, don't they? They sort of have that swoosh. So we want to include that. Oof. Can we... I guess I could add worms and add fire ants. I am not going to decide right now. Right now, we're going to focus on the bird. Maybe once all of you guys have left, once the stream is over, then I'll just cover it in worms. Nobody can say no. Cool. Uh, another pretty neat tool that I thought I had here. Maybe I don't. Huh. Oh, here it is. It's this little rubber nubbin. I actually, for the life of me, don't know what these are called. But if you see them, they are handy for oil paint because it is like a nice, like a squeegee. If you need to clean up a contour, you can really just scrape it right off. Um, and yeah, they're pretty, pretty handy. Also for things like if you need to like make whiskers, you can kind of carve whiskers out. If I wanted to draw some of these feathers, you know, I can kind of, I can kind of almost like draw in the paint with it, like that. Which, um, I'm going to be adding highlights there later anyway. I, I do prefer to do that kind of thing with paint, but sometimes in a pinch or if you're doing something really fast, um, it can make for some really cool effects. Uh, these are really great tools for cleanup and for mark making. Highly recommend. All right, so we're going to clean that up again. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, now, um, next up, we're going to load up the brush with um, kind of a palish, grayish, yellowish, whitish color. I guess palish covers the whitish aspect. But... Um, and we're just going to drop in. There's like a highlight right here. I want that. And I think that very same highlight color will show up right here. Yep, that'll do. Alright, and I think it also shows up right around here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep, that's the winner. That's the one. It lightens up a little right here, too. Um, that's a little lighter than I want, so I'm going to dull that a hair. Dull it a hair. I, some people are a lot better at mixing the color they want, and they know it's the right color before they make the mark. Me, I, I often find myself making the mark, realizing it isn't what I wanted, and then painting over it. Whoops, that was a wayward mark. We'll just leave it for now. I got those shaky hands this morning. Truth is, I usually paint at night, um, so these live streams are kind of a fun experiment. Can I wake up enough to do a good job? The answer is sometimes yes, sometimes no. So um, as we go, we're going to keep trying to re-emphasize this real sense of roundness to the bird. Yeah, uh, so, to, yeah, it's funny, uh, the beginning of a piece is always, um, <laughs> it always goes so fast, and then, before you know it, like, yeah, the kinds of things you're doing, you, like, ask somebody, hey, do you think it looks better? Like, what did you do to it? 
you get some pretty diminishing returns. Um, this is probably the most exciting part. Because, yeah, dimension happens really fast. And on the phone screen, especially, you guys kind of have everything sort of, like, blurred. Everything's been sort of taken out of focus. Which, um, is effectively, it's hitting as stepping back. And, um, yeah, you get a lot more, uh... The effect is a lot more convincing um, at a distance. Cool. All right. And then, yeah, this little, like, splat of feathers down here. We're going to have to figure something out with that. I don't know exactly how I want to render that, because um, I kind of want to keep things sort of chunky. I, I like that chunky paint. So we're going to... We're gonna play around a bit, I think, before we're done. There's gonna be a little bit of play, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, but that's okay. That's an important part too. You don't have to have all the answers. You just need to have enough answers, I suppose, to to get you to the part where you're guessing. You just need enough answers to get started, really. And uh, let's go ahead and carve in the little birdie eye. Yep. There's our little birdie eye. And that's too dark. I'm going to have to come back for you. Womp. Womp. Yeah, um, I'm a little bit behind um, on posting stuff because I have the orange one orange painting from a couple weeks ago, and then the uh, still light from several weeks ago. Both of those I intend to finish in the next couple days, but I've been intending that for a while. Um, I did just get a lot of organizing done in here, though, so I can kind of get more work done, because I was getting stifled. Um, so yeah, when this is done, this gets posted. Um, and in fact, everything I've been painting for these, um, they're going to be for sale. Um, if anybody's interested, um, so they can, they're, they're, they're learning tools when they're in the live stream and then they become little, they graduate to becoming products. Um, just little tiny, um, more affordable paintings that, uh, I, I, I don't actually know if they started doing this, but I was told we're starting to post, um, or share our links on these, um, Anyway, jonathanfusco.bigcartel.com for anyone who's interested. Um, but yeah, give me some time to finish them. Uh, when, I, when I post them, I put them on the website, too. Um, but yeah, the finished product will be posted. Um, I have like a bunch of 80% done paintings floating around this studio right now. By a bunch, I mean a handful, but more than I'd like to have because you kind of have to work around them. I don't have a real safe place to keep them while they're drying, so they just sort of rest on various surfaces, which means there's less surface to uh, work on, but they'll get done. They'll get done. So, yeah, just doing some more fine-tuning. The face is kind of... The face is pretty important. We, as human beings, get stuck on faces. Um, so you really do want to make sure that if you get anything right, well, hopefully you get everything to a point where it works. But what you really want to have work, for sure, is the face. Um... Like I said, there's this kind of, like, crushed, bent neck thing going on in here that I'm pretty eager to try to capture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep, something like that. And some of that green is going to come in over here. Now, why did I put green there? The truth is the color that shows up there is more of a gray. But I did the green because with painting, 
if you ever look at how the impression is painted, um, wherever you use a color, it should probably show up somewhere else on the piece. Um, it helps to unify it. And um, like I said, I intend to emphasize color. I often do in most of my work. I intend to emphasize the colors I see here. And part of that means exaggerating saturation. So it might not be quite that saturated in life, but for the sake of the piece and capturing the essence or the impression of the bird, if you will, um, yeah, we're going to play that up. And if you look at a Van Gogh painting, I highly doubt any room he ever lived in was that vibrant, a red color in that many places. But in a very real way, that's what he saw. And in a very real way, I see green in that gray. And just pulling it out so you can share it with other people. Basically just putting it in italics. Totally legit. We're not cameras. We are not cameras. We have cameras, but we are not cameras. So if you're going to paint, you may as well do something a little bit different with it. Representation is important, because that is kind of the, the magic trick, you know, as you're making a flat surface look like it's a little less flat. But there's still a lot of room to explore the medium. If you're just joining me, I know I'm doing this plug a little late. But if you're just joining me, welcome to Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. Today we are painting a bird that had, I think, somewhat recently passed when we found it. I suppose it was at least a week before we found it. Um, just based on. What I'm saying, but somewhat recently. It's a painted bunting. I invite you to paint along with me today. If you like, if you have any paintings or, pardon me, pardon me, uh, photographs of birds in your phone, dead or alive, that you've been wanting to work with, this would be a great time to do it. Whatever medium you choose, or whatever you want to work on, whatever it is, we'd love to see it in the comments below. If you're just here to hang out, that's cool too. Thrilled to have you. And yeah, if you have any questions as we go, I do have the chat fairly close to me. I can see it. Since I moved the live stream station over here, it's been a lot easier to participate. So, yeah, the further we go, the more I'm really wanting to bring out this, like, cool gray. There's, like, all this cool gray business going on in the feathers. You can't really tell, I suppose, in the photo of the photo, but um, you can see a little bit. Um, pretty eager to play that up. Okay, yeah. And anybody who watches Bob Ross knows that you have to make the noises. It's very, very important that you make the noises. Um, even if people look at you funny. My cat was in here earlier. I kind of thought that she would be joining us today. But she did not like that she wasn't supposed to walk on the pallet. And so she stormed off in a huff. Um, she wanted to make oil paint paw prints, which has happened in here before. Um, I came home one... No, I woke up one morning and she had gotten in here, stepped on the pallet, and then all over the studio were just these little paw prints. Absolutely everywhere. It was like kind of funny and kind of tragic, because most of the stuff's pretty toxic. She's a very old cat. So I worry about her health. Anyway... And now she had, like, all this oil paint to get off. So I found her and tried to clean off her feet as best I could. But, yeah, she had tracked all over. It was like a family circus cartoon. If you guys remember those, where the little dotted lines scurried about through the neighborhood. 
Thanks so much for joining today, Lydia. We'll see you. Ta-ta. Yeah, we've already made a fair bit of progress. It's not... Not as many... I, I imagined a lot more hiccups for this one. I really like the colors. I'm pretty excited about that aspect of it. I need another bright, a small bright. Yeah, we're only halfway done with the video. This is great. Yeah, like I said, eventually we are going to be throwing some paint around the bird. It won't just be on this empty pink space. There will be a little more going on. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, we're going to mix up a new highlight for one. It's going to have a little bit of yellow in it. Again, unify the piece. We want a little yellow just to sort of bring in all the yellows and greens we've had. We want them to show up a little bit in the highlight. Now, let's see, now that's not bright enough. So we're going to grab, I think this is titanium white. Yeah, that's titanium white. And you can tell because it's killing the color and just turning white. Um, but for our purposes right now, that is a good thing. So I'm throwing a little flake white replacement in it too. Flake white replacement is kind of a tacky white. It's a little bit translucent, but not as translucent as the zinc. The zinc is what I was using over here. Um, they call it flake white replacement because it used to be made with lead. But they do not make it with lead anymore. Which we are all very grateful for. I am curious if it's how much it's changed though since they switched the material and if um, it does what it used to. I'll never know. I'm not really that interested in seeking out genuine flake white. All right. So we're going to do a little overlap. It's going to magically blend here, and that's okay. We want that. Um, kind of creates sort of that sense of thin feathers layering over each other. Yeah. That's a handsome bird. So, um, while we're working on highlights, I have this sort of like steel blue gray going on I've been using for the wings. We are going to brighten that up a little with zinc and see how that feels. And some of the highlight I just had, I'm going to mix that in. I want to see if I can't shape some of these feathers a little better. Because I've been doing a lot of work up here, and it's paying off. This is this is getting to a, a, a fine place. and. We want that, but all this down here is a mess. So, I had an art teacher, and anyone who follows me on these streams, you've heard me say this story a million times, but he always said, treat it like a camera. Like you're focusing a camera, the idea being that you're rendering it all fairly evenly across. And I say it out loud to you because I have to say it out loud to myself all the time. So it's really easy to get caught up in the stuff you're having fun painting and not work on the stuff that you're putting off and that you're afraid you're going to goof up like this transition in the feathers, this gradient because yeah, the, the feathers do a lot of really cool, beautiful things and I just um, am putting it off um, but while I have this color on my brush Let's throw some highlight down here. One reason I'm holding off on getting the magenta down is that I want to have figured out pretty solidly what I want. Um, th this this uh, contour in particular, since it's 
got so much going on and so many nooks and crannies. I just want to be real sure that that's where I want it. Because once I go in with my contour, um, it's going to uh, be really hard to mess with uh, in any direction after that. Uh, it's just going to start turning muddy and brown. And I, I want the magenta to be bright and clean. Um, if you're working in acrylic, none of this matters. You can always just go over it. But if we're doing wet on wet oils, it's going to want to turn gray there. And we don't want that. So, yeah, that's why I haven't done that yet. Cool. That isn't bad. That isn't bad. This is going to need more love but it's good that we're doing something to it now. What a pretty bird. What a pretty bird. I cheated a little bit on this one today. I started it before we turned on the camera just because I wanted to make sure all my colors are what I wanted um, and be sure that I'm not wasting anyone's time. You, know, you want these streams to go well, and I, I realized that uh, when rewatching them, I've spent an awful lot of time mixing colors and I guess I'm doing that now, but at the very least, I, I'm not guessing right now. I'm pretty sure I have the scheme I want. I suppose I haven't just totally decided on the kind of magenta, but I think any magenta I choose is going to be pretty cool. Um, I don't know what the magic answer will be, but I think it'll be pretty cool regardless. We are listening to Beethoven today. Nice, royalty-free Beethoven. The music is distracting. I appreciate the notes. I'm always wanting to do a better job. The more of these we do, I'm always trying to do better. But it's nice for when I'm not sure what to say, because I'm sort of just doing the same thing for five minutes. It's a time-consuming process it really is in some ways drawing is slower and in some ways drawing is faster I think for this kind of thing drawing is faster that's pretty close to what we want yeah thank you all for joining me I'm sorry I missed you last week um, yeah I was out of state I was out of state photographing dead birds I kept uh, my distance. Actually, where I was, there were only been three cases since this whole thing started, so and I, I spent it out in the country. I didn't spread anything or get in too many places. We were we were distant, trying to be safe, but it was nice to get away for a bit from this state right now. I was not getting any less scary right now. But I'm glad people are getting to uh, get out of the house a bit more, I suppose. Even if I'm a little worried about it. Yes, this is what we want. Yeah, so this happening right here is a gloriously happy accident. But the way this is mixing on top of the wing, um, pretty dang excited about that. That's that uh, glow really helps to seal that like sense of roundness sort of fading as we come along the wing here, as the wing curls around the body. So that's pretty exciting. You know, like you kind of hope it's going to work, but then when it actually does, it's always a little bit, it's always a little exciting. Yeah, and this glow in here. Yeah, this blue, this like steely blue, it has a little of that teal in it. I thought that teal would come in handy. I'm not using nearly as much of it as I thought I would. But it's even just that little bit. It's doing some pretty cool stuff. And I don't know, maybe I'll bring it in more later. Um, There's going to be a lot of push and pull on this piece because of all the little feathers and all the little things coming forward and tucking behind. I think 
I have an audience of all art force people right now. I'm mixing up more feather color. Um, after saying out loud I haven't used that much of the teal, I've decided I want to bring more teal in. I think it's going to be pretty cool up in the head too. Particularly like, yeah, like right here. Where the head curls away. And right here. Um, so why teal? How did I come to the conclusion that I wanted teal? Um, honestly, just the color I like. And I figured there'd be a place it would show up. Um, if it's next to green, it will always feel natural because it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's it is, it's right off of green. So, using it to describe shadow, or to describe like tiny, planar changes, um, will always work. So. Uh, I don't see hard teal, but I do see the shadows, and it's not hard for me to project teal into it. And I just thought it would make for a really pretty color, especially next to magenta. Um, I thought it would be pretty cool. And so far, I think I've been vindicated. You might be like, okay, then why magenta? Why are you going to do magenta in the background? Why aren't you painting the gloves that it's in? Uh, honestly, purely because of the composition, I think that it will be a more interesting painting with a big bright color field um, than it would be if I um, was just doing kind of that photorealistic, like what was actually happening. I, I had some other photos of it on a wood um, deck, and even then I just kind of thought, man, I just think this would be really cool glowing in a field of opposite colors. So why magenta? It's an opposite color. Um, and I'm excited to do some sort of, like my intention is once I start getting that color in to have some of it reflected in the feathers and have some of the bird reflected in the magenta and sort of create this almost like watery puddle <laughs> of magenta that the bird is laying in or resting in. Um, that's the goal. And I don't know if we'll get that far today. Um, I'm spending an awful lot of time rendering the bird, which is good, because that is the star of the show. But you kind of get the idea with the pink uh, underpainting, which is also... Um, I was thinking of doing a different color, but in the end I was thinking, no, pink is going to be great, especially since we're going to see some of it peeking through. Um, and it is going to be closely related to that magenta. And so some of my reflected light might be built into the negative space. Um, which is the other reason why I'm doing magenta, is that I had already decided to do a pink underpainting. And I just think that's really going to pay off. Um, time will tell, but yeah, you know, a lot of guesswork. And it's okay to guess. Um, if I had any um, tips, I guess, for somebody who was trying to get into painting. Uh, uh, one thing I emphasize a lot um, in our workshops is like, you know, don't be afraid to try new things. I'm not saying you should get reckless and just make any marks. Any, any marks will do, you know. If you're trying to be representational, you should take your time. Um, it, it does pay off to, to have a plan and to work in steps. But also, there is room to experiment and be like, shoot, let's just try it. Um, not that green and magenta is like some groundbreaking new idea. I think they all, it's already been pretty well proven they look good together, but the trick is mostly just keeping them from getting muddy. Um, that's going to be the trick. What am I doing? Uh, you know, going around, carving in highlights, uh, doing some more work on the face. Now that I've uh, done some work in the tail, I feel like I've been freed up to go back and... work on the anatomy of the face a bit more. I feel like I earned it. And yeah, we want to keep this bright. Yeah, there we go. And actually, I think we're going to move this eye hole technical term 
I think we are going to move it up a bit. Oof, that is too dark. Don't want that. Too gosh darn dark. So, brightening that up a little. Yeah, this goes forward a hair. That's the other reason we keep things simple. And then it's not too much fuss, you know, to move things around. Um, very seldomly is my initial drawing correct. Like, you know, you're going to have to make some changes. And it's okay, it's okay. It's, it's part of the searching process. Some people like to get everything just right. I, I honestly just like working with the paint. I like to do it with the paint. But yeah, if you, either, I know there are plenty of artists out there who will draw every little thing. They have all their planes laid out and they paint from one corner all the way down, blending as they go. Maybe some touch-ups at the end. I like working in layers, so that's what you get when you watch me paint. You see layers. Okay, that's just how I think. You know, go with how you think. What What does your brain want you to do? Because going with your instincts is how you develop a style anyway. And above all, I think what draws us to art more than anything, technical skill, all that, you know, like that matters, it does. But more so than that, I think style. I think style. You know, you can see, you tend to see a lot of artists who all kind of paint the same way, and it can be a little hard to get excited about them, any of them if they don't stand out. I don't know if this bird painting is going to stand out in the end, but it's a worthy goal. There we go. Yes, what a handsome bird. This is cool. This has been fun. I'm going to have to extend the beak a little bit, I realize now. As the head has changed shape a little bit, the beak needs to change shape to accommodate. So, this will only take a second. Easy does it. Easy does it. There we go. Something like that. And yeah, I'm gonna have to clean up some of these marks around the face. And there's some other business on the face that's bugging me, but I'm gonna get carried away there. We're gonna step away for a second and come back to that. I won't forget what's bugging me because it bugs me every time I look at it. There's just some like anatomical little things I do want to include. This is a small painting. I don't need to get super tiny, super tight with it. Um, it's a study. But there are some things I want to at least hint at. Some topographical landmarks on the bird that will be worth it. But um, first things first, I do want to also establish a highlight right here. I need to get brighter than that. Let's also throw some flake in it. I think flake will want to rest on top a bit better. Oof, look how tacky that is. Yum. That's what you want. And I'm going to thin it just a hair with linseed and just a hair of Gamsol. And we're going to put it on the end of the brush. The paint is going to go on the end of the brush in kind of a clump. And we're going to try to lay it on top. For a lot of the marks coming, since we already have a lot of base paint layers down, this is how we'll be doing it. Um, kind of loading up the end of the brush, using more paint, um, but really, uh, is this going to show up? Will it focus? No, not really. 
whatever. All right. Anyway, point is, you got it loaded up, and yeah, we're just gonna lay it right on top. Nice. Nice. Cool. I'm thinking about feather direction a little bit as I do this too. And these might get blended a bit more. In fact, I know that they will. It's a little chunkier than I had in mind, but I do want it chunky. Chunky's good. I'm always looking for balance though. Cool. And some void. That's what you want. All right. So with that same color I have mixed up, I'm going to take it, throw a little more green into it, maybe a little yellow into it, just a little. And I'm taking a smaller brush, again loading up the end, really loading it on there. And we're going to drop some highlights down into the tail. Is that too bright? I don't think so. Not too, too bright. I am throwing a little more yellow into it. I want it bright, but I want it more saturated. I think in the photo it's pretty white, but I think it'll look better if it's more saturated. Yeah, like that. Okay, like that. I'm so grateful for this dry board right here so that I can plant my hand for this kind of thing. Maybe that's the other reason I'm putting off doing the magenta. It's just like I just do not want to have to float paint right now while my hands are this shaky. Um, but again, there are things you can do. You can take a uh, like a board, and like in this case, in my situation, I would like place the board here. I'd have to move my palette away, but I'd place the board here and lean it. And then I'd have a board right here that I could then lean on and then make my marks. Like so. Ooh, ten minutes. I have this sudden fear like, oh shit, is it, pardon me, not my language there. Uh, but oh goodness, is it already... 12.30, no, it is not. We have a little time left, which is great. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you for joining me today. Audrey is my older sister. She has a print shop in Indianola, Studio Fusco. She does fantastic work. Highly recommend. Am I allowed to plug family on here? Let's do it. I already did. Um, I kind of like this on an old rustic panel like this. I think the textures are working out pretty well. Uh, I think especially once I get the paint on thicker and thicker, um, I think that's going to pay off. So let's go back into the bright brights now that we have some more of those semi highlights and we are now going to go really bright bam like that does that even show up on the camera a little bit it does on the camera a little bit um you can also have bright bright right there and bright a bright bright right there cool cool not bad not bad not a bad start we did pretty good today we're probably about halfway done maybe a little less While I've got my bright bright out, I will saturate it a hair. Let's saturate it a little bit. I'm throwing some yellow with just the slightest hint of green. Um, I told you there was some stuff in the face bugging me. This isn't the only one, but this is one, so let's just do it. I want to get this highlight in. 
on the edge. And I warned you we'd come in and blend some of that. And I think that pays off. I think that pays off. I'll take some yellow too. gonna get real but again the goal with this piece is saturation you need the grays I think to set off the color um, so it's not all saturated but every opportunity you get or it will make sense oh we're saturating yes ma'am we sure are Again, always emphasizing that roundness. So whenever a shape comes forward, we're brightening it. When it sinks back, we're graying it, cooling it, or darkening it. Sometimes a combination of all of the above. I'm letting the underpainting shine through in places too to substitute for shadow. And it might just be the shadow. Um, you know, as you go, you might find out, oh, it doesn't really balance well. Uh, I'm going to have to change that. But so far, cleaning off a little brush here because I want to throw some, I want to put something bright on it. But yeah, so far, I, I'm really enjoying those oranges playing shadow, that underpainting orange playing the shadow role. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I kind of figured that this painting would be a lot of this, you know, itty bitty little marks. It's a lot going on in this little bird. I'm sure. I'm sure this bird had a rich inner life. It also had a very rich outer life. I am going to continue painting this morning. Um, past artful connections here. Uh, I think I'll continue this stream on my Instagram if you'd like to join me there. I don't know if I'll talk quite as much, but if you just want to hang out, um, let's see if we can't knock this one out. We have another four minutes on here. But while I'm already set up, I figure I'll keep streaming. Why Instagram? Honestly, because Facebook is just um, a little bit fussier but not that this doesn't work out really well I have my other phone all ready to go for Facebook we've got ourselves a pretty good start here folks um, And as always, I'm really grateful for Art Force to let me come on here and share what I do with you guys and talk process with you. This has been a really weird couple of months, but it's just nice to have these outlets where we can talk shop. There's a lot of important stuff in this world, but painting is, I think, an important thing to hold dear. Or drawing, or whatever the heck you're creating, really, is what I mean. And having this outlet has been a real blessing. And I can't thank them enough for the continued opportunity. And I can't thank all of you enough for joining me today. 
It really has been a delight. Like I said, I very seldomly paint in the mornings, so this is, these are always really good exercises. You think I would learn by now that I should just be doing this anyway? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. See so yeah, that really dark spot? We're gonna kill that. We're gonna kill that, and we're gonna start bringing. Yeah, and it's okay if it turns a little gray because we want to create that sort of translucent quality. This is where oils really shine because they mix together really well. So we had all these separate areas. But now as we bring them together, they will mix naturally when we are ready for them to, you know, like we're in, that's, that's sort of the magic of it. We, we did it when we were ready, but we kept them separate as long as we needed them to. And then that dark stays there. And I think I'm going to end up bringing some more dark in there to re-establish some of that, but that's a pretty cool little blend right there. I think that was a success. All right. Cool. Ooh, this tiny brush. I am going to get away from that. That is dangerous. Thank you, Lydia, and thank you for all your questions. If you guys are painting along with me today, we do want to see it. Please do post it below. This has been Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. And we've been painting a dead bird. Let's do a little a final look here. There she is. Pretty decent start. Pretty decent start. Thank you all. Stay safe. Happy Monday. Ta-ta.